I'm Mina from Supermetrics, and here's how we here at Supermetrics have set up our GA4. You can start by going to analytics.google.com and signing in with your Google account. To be able to set up new properties in GA4, it's good to check at this point that you have admin rights. If you don't know what a property is, uh, and this is a quote from Google support, it is a set of Google Analytics reports and data associated with one or more websites and or apps. So basically, it's the view we're about to make. If it, this is your first time in Google Anal Analytics, it might ask you to create a property right away. If you've been using Universal Analytics before, then just open up any property to get started. It's good to note that both Universal Analytics and GA4 can be found from the same place. All new properties will be set to GA4, so you don't have to wonder if you're in the right place. So let's get started. Uh, if you're in Universal Analytics, click here uh, on the left bottom corner, which says admin, and then just uh, here, create property. But we're starting from the scratch. So here we go. So now you have your new uh, analytics account. And from here, you can click admin. Uh, check on the account column that the, uh, this is the right account. So either it says your company's name or then the, the account that you have just created. And from here, you can click create properties. Uh, then you give the property a name. Uh, it's good to have have it as clear as possible. Even though it's internal, it, it won't show to your customers. But as most of the companies do have universal analytics properties still existing as well, uh, we can name it, for example, GA4, uh, our website, and demo. Here we go. Then you choose the time zone and the currency. So they should be selected in a way that serves your business the best. So if you're in the main market is in the US, choosing the time zone and the currency to reflect that will help your conversions and events will so they will be tracked on the right date. All of these settings can be changed afterwards. So no panic. Then we just click next. Uh, these are business information uh, questions that are optional. So you can choose, for example, the industry that you work on or the size of your business, but these, these won't make any difference on your use of GA4. Then we just click create and congratulations, your property has been created. What is really cool with GA4 is that you can track your website and apps in the same property, which wasn't the case in the universal analytics. As we at Supermetrics don't have an app to track, we'll set up the website for this demo only. The instructions are pretty simple for the app setup as well, so I'm sure you'll manage. So here we choose a platform and as we're doing a website, we click web and then we add our URL here. So we can add mywebsite.com here and the stream name can be my website as well. There's the enhanced measurements that are recommended to put on. You can do that. Uh, you can also, uh, you can turn them off later if you like. So that's, uh, that's that. And then just create stream. So here we have it and you're basically done. Uh, now, as we have everything set on the GA4 side, it's time to add the tracking to the site. You can do that either with the script that you can find from the install manually part or then in Google Tag Manager. And here's Sophie to tell you how. Hi, I'm Sophie from Supermetrics, and I'm here to tell you about using Google Tag Manager to set up Google Analytics tracking on your website. So what is Google Tag Manager and what does it do? 
Tag Manager is a tool that makes it easy to manage and update measurement codes on your website. All you need to do is install Google Tag Manager on your website, and then you can add whatever analytics and add tracking to your website without touching the source code of the website. So firstly, you'll need to go to tagmanager.google.com and create a container for your website. You'll need to install Google Tag Manager by adding the code directly to every page on your website. You might need uh, the help of a developer for this part. Once you have the Tag Manager container installed on a website, you can start setting up your GA4 tracking. There are two main components you need to understand when using Google Tag Manager, tags and triggers. Essentially, tags are the what and triggers are the when. The tag is a snippet of code that sends data to the syst a system, such as Google Analytics 4 or Meta's tracking pixel, for instance. Google Tag Manager has a library of commonly used tag, meaning for Google Analytics 4, you'll only need the measurement ID from the profile that Minna just showed you had set up. So in order to get started, you just click here on tags and click new. Now you see you have your tag area and you have your triggering area. So we click on the pen. And as I mentioned, there are uh, a library of uh, predetermined scripts here. So we'll choose the GA4 configuration. But if you want to set up events for your Google Analytics 4, there's also the event tag here, along with a lot of other tags. So we click on the GA4 configuration tag. And we will just paste in the measurement ID. And you can leave all the other settings as they are if you're just doing a basic setup. And then we need to decide the triggering. So that's the when this tag will be fired on your website. Triggers can be such, as, such things as clicks. They can be form submissions and other types of actions on your site. But for this, we want the tag to uh, collect data on all our pages. So we'll just click the all pages trigger that is predetermined. And then we'll save it. And when we save it, we'll have to give it a name. So I'll choose this predetermined Google Analytics J4 configuration name. And now we have the tag set up and we can see it here. Now, this isn't live anywhere yet. So and before you put it live on your website, I suggest you click preview and you click around on your website to see that it collects data on all the different pages. Once you're happy with your setup and it's firing the way you want on your website, you just click submit you can give it a name and put some details on what you're publishing to your site. And then you click publish and then it's live on your site and it will start collecting data. Thanks, Sophie. Now, as the setup is completed, it takes some time to see the data in all of our GA4 reports. If you want a sneak peek, uh, you can go to the real time view and you should be able to see the traffic coming to your site and some events that starts to generate. So going to the real-time view, you can go to reports, and then there's the real-time. Now, of course, as the URL as mywebsite.com, we don't see any, but you should be able to see some traffic here. Speaking about events, you have the possibility to create or modify events of your own. That can be done in the admin selection. You go here and select the right property, which is the one that we just created and then go to events and here you can either modify events or create events one good example of the event that you can create is a custom event for a thank you page so that's something useful for most of the uh, businesses few last things before you go check at least these two things in the settings so the first thing that we need to change is the data gathering that we change it from two months to 14 months if you don't do this your reports will only have the data from the last two months so here you will go to the admin settings as we are currently in and then you go to data settings and data retention and here you switch the selection to 14 months and then click save so easy and simple uh, the second 
implemented improvement is to exclude your internal traffic. So if you want to do that, we're still staying in the admin settings. And then uh, from here, you select your just created data stream and then go to configure tag settings. Here, it will show it like this. And then you click show all. Mm, and then define internal traffic. Here, you can click create. And then the rule name can be, for example, uh, RHQ. And the traffic type is internal. And from here, you can select that IP address equals or IP address contains. We can have here equals. And then you'll add your IP address here and click yes. If you want to exclude the internal data, you go back to the settings here and then you go to data filters and it will appear here. So it, the name is the internal traffic. You click from here and then you turn it is into active. So after you click save and activate filter, then it will have the current status active. And now you're all set. Once you start gathering data in GA4, you can see your data in reports. For more custom views, you can use the explore in GA4 or then try the Supermetrics GA4 connector to bring your data to Google Sheets, Looker Studio, or Excel. I personally like to use the Google Sheets product with GA4 data, so I dare to you to try that as well. Hopefully, this video gave you insights on how your setup, how to set up your GA4 property. Happy reporting!